Hey, in this video, I will introduce you to the GPSD or the, the General Product Safety Directive in the EU. Understanding the GPSD is absolutely essential if you plan to sell anything in the EU or if you are selling in the EU because it's sort of a catch-all and that's why it can be a bit tricky to understand when the GPSD applies and what it means in practice. And that's what I'm going to try to, to explain in this video. So we're going to start by looking through the product scope, the role of standards and harmonized standards in particular, how you, what you need to consider if there are no harmonized standards in place under the GPSD for your products. Then we're going to look through labeling requirements and finally testing requirements. But first, let's look at the definition. What is the GPSD? Well, the GPSD applies to consumer goods when there are no specific provisions with the same objective under other, well, existing EU directives. Now, let me try to explain what this means because it can be a bit confusing. Now, let's say that I'm selling toys. Then my product is covered by the Toy Safety Directive. And I will be concerned with the Toy Safety Directive. But let's say I'm selling something else. Stick to children's products, say children's furniture. Well, it's not a toy, in most cases anyway. And that's when the GPSD applies. Now, the GPSD is actually a lot broader than this. It's again a catch-all, a safety net. It essentially says that if there are no regulations or directives or compliance requirements that apply to a certain product or a feature of a product, then the GPSD steps in. What does this mean? It means that regardless of what you're selling in the EU, it must be reasonably safe. That's what the GPSD is, is about. I think many brands, importers, manufacturers misunderstand compliance in the EU in the sense that they are looking at the product parameters and they determine that, okay, my product doesn't need C mark, it's not an FCM, doesn't fall under any of these directors or regulations that are, say, more product specific, so it's all clear. Well, it's not. You still have the GPSD. So examples of products that now, I just want to make something clear, because this could actually be a, a bit confusing. I'm not saying that it only applies to children's clothing, bicycles and fitness products. These are just some examples for which there are existing harmonized standards under the GPSD or reference standards. I'm, I'm not sure which term they're using, to be honest. The GPSD would be relevant for absolutely anything. And as a matter of fact, the GPSD is not just about covering products, but aspects of products that are not covered by another director. So in that sense, you may actually need to apply, say, standards from the low voltage directive and from the GPSD. At the same time, it's just that they cover different safety aspects. But in any case, it covers all consumer products. That's what the GPSD is about. It's a catch-all, it's a safety net. And it ultimately comes down to this. A product, this is from the GPSD text, by the way, a product shall be presumed safe as far as the risk and risk categories covered by the relevant national standards are concerned when it conforms to voluntary national standards, transposing European standards. And again, let me explain um, what this means, that if you follow standards, well, harmonized standards in this case, or other non-harmonized for that matter, then that's a presumption of safety. So essentially, you need to comply with standards under GPSD or those that are not under GPSD. But let's look at let's look at those that are harmonized for starters. So as is the case with many EU directives, a harmonized standard is essentially a reference standard or a a recognized standard, you can say. So you find under the, you can find on the EU website and European uh, European Union Commission website uh, under GPSD a list of harmonized standards, and this list can be downloaded as a PDF or an Excel file. Examples include EN five eight one for outdoor furniture, a long list of standards for gymnastic equipment, stationary training training equipment, and so on. So that's the first place to look. 
when you try to determine, okay, what does it mean to comply with the GPSD in practice from an engineering, from a supply chain point of view? So another quality of that is very important. Now, what do I do? What do I do if there are no harmonized standards in place for my product? That is something that our customers have to deal with quite a lot. Well, the European U Union Commission, the European Commission, they also makes this very clear. If there are no regulations or EU standards referenced in the official journal of the European Union, the product compliance is determined according to other reference documents such as other, this means non-harmonized EU standards, national standards that could be say a German standard, a French standard, etc., or even a non-European standard. There can be scenarios when you would have to look to, to say, ANSI or ASTM standards in the United States, for example, or even I'm even aware of cases when they're referencing Japanese or JIS standards um, for certain uh, certain products. So yes, you, it's rare, but you may actually have to look beyond the EU. But essentially, what they're saying here is that it doesn't stop simply because there are no harmonized standards in place. If that is the case, you have to look at other non-harmonized EM standards. You have to look at national standards in, in, in the EU. And finally, uh, also international non-European standards, that is. So ultimately, you need to look at standards and you need to, to implement these in practice. Look at the labeling requirements. That's also something that's often overlooked. Now, the GPSD has no provisions for the CE mark, but it does cover the identity and details of the producer and the product reference. This can be company information. It's quite vague. It can be more detailed on a national level. Keep in mind that this is an EU directive just to be clear, but it could require, say, that you need to specify the manufacturer, the import name, uh, model number, SKU, and this is important, the batch of the products to which it belongs. And this is, this is for the sake of traceability. This could be a batch number, a serial number, something that identifies a given unit to a certain production run. It's very important. And again, this is something that many uh, companies um, overlook or completely unaware of. Finally, let's take a look at the lab testing requirements. And again, this is a quote from the GPSD itself. And what it says is that in all cases where appropriate, the carrying out of sample testing of marketed products, investigating, and if necessary, keeping a register of complaints and keeping distributors informed of such monitoring. Well, it makes pretty clear that Lab testing, it's, well, it's not written explicitly that, say, batch testing or uh, you need periodic testing that follow a certain frequency. But it, they make it clear that the expectation is that compliance with standards are verified to some extent. And how is that verified? Well, normally through lab testing. That's ultimately what it comes down to. And again, uh, you can also you can find this information. This is public information. You can find it on the EU Commission website under the GPSD. You can read the entire GPSD if you want that. And I actually recommend that you do so because then it will give you more context. But they're pretty clear that um, it's it's an expectation that um, there is some sort of testing procedure involved. Okay, so I hope you learned a few things from this video. You can, you can also write your questions in the comment section on YouTube, or you can, of course, also go to the website compliancegate.com.